That's it. Ready? Everybody? Um, good morning, everybody. I want to go back and congratulate Georgia Tech. At, uh, Brent Key's done an amazing job. He's been, I've been a head coach 34 years, and he's been a head coach four or five games. And he's beaten Georgia Tech. He's beaten Pitt on the road. He beat us on the road. Um, he, he's really done an amazing job, and, and he had his team better prepared than, than I did after 34 years. So uh, got to give him credit. Interim coach, uh, went through two or three quarterbacks, um, and just keeps winning. So he'd have to be considered for that job. Uh, moving forward because those coaches did an outstanding job. Uh, they're, none of them are sure where they're going to be uh, at this point next year. So um, I, I like coaches. I admire when they do a good job, and those guys did a good job. Um, defensively, we did have some guys play well, and we, we had five straight stops to start the game. We did a lot of good things. Uh, Storm Duck played his best game since he's been here with the interception. He had another strip on the, on the uh, field that we didn't get on. Uh, Cayman Rucker, Ritzy, Miles Murphy, Hester, uh, Sed Gray, and, and Power Eccles all played really well. So we've got to play better in the secondary other than Storm, but the, the front people did a, a very good job uh, throughout the night. Offensively, we didn't. We had three guys that, that played well, and that's Ed Montalus played his best game, and then the two tight ends that, that played, uh, Kamari Morales and, and Bryson Nesbitt. Um, and then special teams, the, the punt team did a great job. We punted more than we normally do, and uh, Ben did a really good job. They put pressure on the punter, and, and our, our shield of um, guys did an outstanding job with Hester and, and uh, Malik McGowan and Jonathan Adorno. Uh, Noah Burnett continues to, to do an outstanding job with the kicking, and Marcus Allen, Obi Abguna, uh, Dede Hollins, and, and um, McCray. Uh, all did a really, really good job. So uh, those are names that the coaches felt like stood out and, and played really, really well. Um, it's always been a negative for me when we score on the first play of the game offensively because you, you just, you've just played your rival uh, in Wake. Um, you're playing your rival the next week in state, and then it just looks like it's going to be too easy. And you jump out 17 to nothing, and you don't finish it. And that team has come back against everybody. I mean, they, they were down in the fourth quarter against uh, Virginia Tech and kept fighting. And that's why I, I admire what their coaches have done so well. Um, and, and it's usually an imposter. It just looks like it's easy and it jumps up to bite you. So when I saw it, I said, everybody go tell them it's nothing, nothing. Now we've got to start over. Um, but it's, it's hard to get their attention, and we didn't. And I thought the difference in the game was that they were three for three in touchdowns in the red zone, and we were one for five. And, and we've been great in red zone touchdowns. We weren't as good last week, and, and we were horrible on Saturday night. And that was the difference in the game both ways. Um, and, and we've got to get back to, to doing that better. Uh, we've got to be more consistent with our running game. We had some big runs. The, the second one to um, – um, Elijah Green, the flag was thrown when he was about to 35. It was way late. We've turned it into the league. Um, it's a tough, tough call. Uh, that would have won the game. Um, and this came down to a player two. two. Um, but I've told the guys, don't, don't put the game in the hands of the officials. Don't let it come down to one play uh, where a, a human being makes a decision. If, and if he makes a wrong decision and gets you beat, that's our fault for not making more plays. Uh, but that was a, that was a tough one. Um, and really a, a heartbreaker. Um, we had control of the game up 17, and then we allowed them to score with a couple. I was calling timeouts to stop them and try to get to 24 right before the half, and they go score with an explosive. Uh, and then it, it puts us, uh, they get the momentum at halftime. We've got to come back out the second half and get momentum and score, and we don't. And then they take the next drive and score. So again, the, the right before the half and after the half is when that game changed. Um, we, uh, we started with five straight stops, uh, but they had three drives of, of nearly 80 yards, and, and all of them were because of an explosive, so it continues to be the same. We held them to fewer explosives. We played better defense. We kept them to 21 points, which is enough for our offense to win the game. But when we had to, unlike in the, the past few weeks in, in the fourth quarter, we had to make a third and nine stop and a third and four stop, and uh, we didn't make it in either one. Uh, both of them are... 
are close, but, but we, didn't, we didn't stop them, and that gave us a chance to, to still win the game. Offensively, we were very uncharacteristic. We had an interception. Uh, we had a, a stop on fourth down. We had drops. It just, we didn't play well uh, at all, and very, very disappointing. And we've lived with our offense and some plays with our defense, and, and to win on, on Friday, both are going to have to step up and, and play better. Um, and again, you look at the, the rival games, and I, I tried to tell the guys this last week, and some listened and some didn't. Um, Arizona beats UCLA before the USC game. South Carolina beats Tennessee, uh, 63 to 38. Arkansas beats Ole Miss, 42 to 27. Vanderbilt beats Florida, 31 to 24. Michigan kicks a field goal with under 10 seconds left to beat Illinois, 19 to 17. And Ohio State has to score with nine seconds left. Uh, to secure their win. So it's, uh, I, I think it's the most dangerous week of the year to play. I've always thought opening games and, and the week before your rival game, and that's why Coach Fedora is probably sm smart playing some lesser schools uh, that week. And I, I'd rather open up with them, but uh, this was a case where it, it jumped up and bit us this weekend. So we've got to get our program in better shape where uh, regardless of who we're playing, we've got to play all the time. And, and that didn't happen on, on Saturday night. Uh, short week, very much like the NFL. I saw, I think the Giants played and the Cowboys played yesterday and they got to play Thursday. So just go back and get ready to go. And our, our week's kind of like that. Today's a Tuesday practice. Uh, tomorrow will be a Wednesday practice. So it just, uh, you, you better, you got to get rid of one and, and get to the next one, win or lose, because you can't let one game beat you twice. And we've got to pick it back up. And the 24-hour rule has never been more important than it is right now. Both teams are banged up, and a lot of teams are this time of the year. Um, so you've, you've got a NC State's recruited well. We've recruited well. But guys have to step up and play. And, and, and that's really, really important going forward here for, for this game. Offensively, in the second half, we had 108 yards. We punted three times. We had an interception. And we, um, we, didn't, we turned it over on downs. Um, and we didn't score in the fourth quarter. And all of those things are the reasons that we've won nine games, that, that we've been doing really, really well in the, the second half. So uh, not sure where all that came from. But again, give, give Georgia Tech credit. Um, NC State's a, a very emotional game. It's a, a rival game. And I've always said that uh, uh, fans uh, are the ones that create rivalries because they, they work together and they go to church together and they see each other at the grocery store and they pick at each other all the time and we've got three of them here that are are, are really important to this university when you got wake and duke and state and all those games are very very important and then a lot of our people have, again uh, spend time with with virginia and virginia tech so there's really like five rivals here um, so the game's very very important uh, you start looking at nc state uh, they've played great defense not good defense they're 21st in total defense in the country, only giving up 200, 200, 323 yards per game. They're 15th in scoring defense, only giving up 18.7 points per game. They're 9th in rushing defense, giving up 100 yards, basically. And they're 18th in third down defense. They're only letting people get third downs 31.8% of the time. Uh, Drake Thomas and Isaiah Moore and Peyton Wilson are three of the best linebackers in the country. In fact, they may be uh, on a team of three, the three best. And their front's really, really strong and tough. And I've been uh, uh, really, really impressed with uh, the way that uh, they've played defense throughout the year. Offensively, they're big, they're physical, they run the ball. We don't know who's going to play quarterback, but we just got beat by a team that played their third and fourth team quarterbacks. So all the quarterbacks are good. Um, so wouldn't be there if they weren't good. And, and somebody didn't think that they were really, really good players. And, and they've got very good backs. Thayer Thomas is, again, one of the best receivers in the country. I'm, I'm so impressed with Drake and Thayer, and Dad's a coach. And those guys compete, and they compete at a high level. And, and they're tough, and they're, they're, they play smart. You can tell they're coaches' kids. And I'm just uh, so impressed with what they do. But Thayer's had 51 catches and four touchdowns uh, with 586 yards. Um, we had a great crowd on, on Saturday night. Um, I was disappointed for them that we didn't play better. Uh, even one of the top recruits that was in here this weekend said, man, this environment was special and, and good. And they stayed and they tried to help you win, coach. And 
that was one thing I wanted to see. So thank you, fans, for, for hanging in there with us and, and staying positive and, and hanging till the end. These kids deserve that. Um, they, they have won a whole bunch of close games, and, and uh, this one bit us because we got to the end and we didn't make the plays that we, we needed to, to to win the game. Uh, questions? Us? No, we, we didn't play good on, on Saturday on offense. We played pretty good up front on defense. But we're not running the ball consistently well. Uh, three of the six sacks were the offensive line. Three of them were somebody else, but doesn't matter. Somebody else got to block them too. So, no. Mac, Mac, not to belabor the point on the, the holy thing that wiped out the big touchdown, but I was just, you know, we were up there watching it, and we were halfway joking, like, it looked like Nesbitt got, like, reverse pancake. Like, he did. He, he, got, uh, he got run over. Right. So, like, I mean, was that, and again, I'm not trying to get some trouble either. I just, like, I just, it seemed pretty unbelievable. It is. That, that's why I really feel like in college football, and I've said this a thousand times, on a call like that that changes a game, we need to go upstairs and let the guy call down and say no. He ran over him. You saw it late. You didn't see it. We were at the 35-yard line. I didn't see it because I, I always check when I see it. There's a touchdown, and then a late flag comes out. And I think we just turn around and see something late, and you're not sure what happened. His backside didn't have anything to do with the play. Um, in fact, we, we've been mad at Bryson for not being in better position and not being more physical because he got run over. So, um, but that, that was disappointing. Did you get an explanation on that? No. Yeah, but he, you send that to the conference? Yeah, but we don't get it back probably till tomorrow. Have you ever seen a holding call on an offensive player on a stadium and you one on their back? No. No, we had one last year. Uh, where against Wake Forest, they dove at our center and, and dove right at his knees, and our center um, put his hands on top of him to keep him from hurting his knees, and they called holding on us. Uh, but that, that's, that was very much like this one. You had so many close games. Winning those is a strength, obviously, but also maybe creates a kind of sense of invincibility. So do you see maybe how losing this last game yeah, I don't ever think losing's good. Yeah. You can learn from it, um, and and there's teachable moments, and um, there, there's guys that wish they'd practiced a little harder, and wish they'd prepared a little better, and they're life lessons more than anything else. But um, sometimes you can say stuff and it sticks, and sometimes it doesn't. So uh, it'll stick more this week than last week. Yeah, you have a trap game. <clears throat> Drake talked about it after the parks. Like that early was on the mind. Did you sense any of that during the week? That they were overlooking for a second a little bit? I did, but I, I thought it was better than Virginia. The Virginia week I thought was really bad. This one I thought defense was more prepared, which they were. More guys played well. Um, and I've, I've just expected our offense to play good. And, and it's the first time we didn't. Yeah, no, NC State's a very, very important game for this school. What happened uh, Saturday, when you look at the big picture, I like to talk about big picture because when you came back, there wasn't nobody there. How many bricks can you get out of Saturday in the middle of the process? It's a good point, Andrew. I think you get a lot because we're, we're always looking at taking another step. We've taken another step by winning eight games. We've taken another step by winning the Coastal for the second time in school history. Um, but you, you've got to take an extra step. And, and like Ross said, we, we knew this was a trap game. And I kept saying during the week, great teams don't have trap games. They get ready to play, and they just go. And, and we didn't. So uh, that's a, a, another teachable moment. It's, it's, uh, and it was at home. And we've played really well at home. Offense let us down. We've played really well on offense. I mean, all these boxes that were checked, 
uh, we're not checked. So you've just, uh, it, it's not about who the best team is ever. It's about who plays the best on that day. And we say it, and, and this, this, our team has to learn that. And we didn't learn that on Saturday. So track games, it's incumbent on the team that is potentially being trapped and not allowed to be trapped games. So that's kind of where the lesson is. Absolutely. If, if you do what we said we wanted to do back in the spring and you played and practiced to a standard of excellence every day, you don't have trap games because that's who you are. And, and obviously we, we've at the end here, and it's been a long season. I mean, I, it's because of me. I started zero week, so it's been a little bit longer than normal. Uh, we've got some guys hurt, and that's made other guys play more than they would have at this point. Um, but it, it doesn't matter. Um, anything less than winning the game is an excuse. And that's why I want to give some credit to Georgia Tech, too. Well, last year you talked a lot about what Sam Howell meant for the program, recruiting-wise, attention-wise, brand-wise. In Drake's short time as your starter, what has he done in those aspects? Drake has given our program and the University of North Carolina more publicity in, in the last 10, 11 weeks than you can buy. It's unbelievable how much attention he's being interviewed on, on game day and sports center. And uh, you can't pay for that stuff. It's too expensive. Just look at those uh, advertisements at the Super Bowl. So he has done so much for our program and our university. And, and coming right off of Sam, it, it's unusual to have two of the greatest quarterbacks in your school history back to back. Both of them young, both of them from Charlotte. Uh, both of them are classy, they're smart, they handle things well, and, and I couldn't be prouder of, of both of them. It seems like Drake was holding onto the ball longer than he usually does. And I don't know, maybe it was a little gun shy or seeing something in Georgia Tech's defense in his fight. Did you say anything to him? Have you spoken to him at all or looked at or seen anything from your side of things or been watching the game? No, but there's. For, for some reason, the guys had off on Sunday. They wouldn't let us. We had to take that a day off this week. So we, we didn't see him till this morning. I haven't really had a chance to talk to him. Coach Longo will talk to you about that. I'm sure he's talked to him. Uh, we just didn't play well. We didn't have a good day offensively. Some of it's the route was cut short. They ran the wrong route. Uh, I mean, if you, you, you sit and look at nights like that, you wonder when none of that has happened where it comes from. I mean, it's like it just comes out of nowhere, and that's why you're, when you're dealing with human beings, and especially young human beings that, that have minds that are all over the place, you never know what you're going to get. That's why coaches get so nervous about Saturday. You think you know, but, but you don't know. And I was, I was anxious about this one just because I knew that, that they had absolutely no pressure and, and we were walking around feeling good about ourselves. You never want to lose a game. No, I, I hate losing. It absolutely makes you sick. I just, I hate it. Matt, do you have to remind, remind you guys about, like, the history of this rivalry, no matter what their record is, this game, you know, how emotional, you talk about emotional. Do you have to remind them about, you know, pay attention to this game, no matter what the records are? Nah, they, they, they know. They, they, they know. There's enough players on this team that have played them for three years. There's enough players on this team from the state of North Carolina, and they have a lot of buddies on the state team. So they laugh and pick at each other, and they hang out together all summer and do that kind of stuff, and that, that's what makes this so much fun. I, I, I like rivalry week probably better than any other week of the season because it's so passionate, and, and teams are so passionate, and they're so emotional, and, and stadiums are full across the country, and – People are picking at each other, and uh, even if it's like this one, you've got some families that are mixed, and, and there will be some uh, red jackets sitting with blue jackets in the stadium picking at each other, some wives, husband wives that don't speak this week. Uh, it's just what it is. It, it was the, the Oklahoma, the Texas-Oklahoma game was very different from the Texas-Texas A&M game because the Texas-Texas A&M game were about a bunch of families from Texas and players from Texas playing each other, and they all knew each other. That's more like this game. Uh, the, the game with Oklahoma was a, a border state, and it was different and uh, totally different from the in-state rivalry. State is a very physical team. Where is your team right now with respect to physicality compared to where you would like it to be? 
Uh, defensively, we're getting better. We did a better job stopping the run most of the time the other night. Uh, the reverse hurt us. Uh, that one squirted on us. There were a couple other runs and some quarterback runs, but we're, we're doing a better job stopping the run than we were early in the season, for sure. Uh, we're not doing a good job stopping um, red zone scores. I, I can't figure that out, but we, we they score three out of three. We're one out of five. Um, and and I, I don't like where we are right now um, on offense. We, we've gotten away from running the ball enough that uh, we had big runs. We would have had two or 300 yards rushing the other night if they hadn't called the, the one long one back. But uh, again, they're check with me runs where we're not, we're not blocking people enough. So uh, no, I, I'm not really happy right now with us offensively. Is there an area of concern about pass protection because the sack numbers have been Yes. Period. I, I mean, we're, we were doing a great job. And I told our coaches, sometimes I think you move the ball so much and it's so easy that you get away from little things that you're doing to, to protect at the first of the year. Um, and we need to go back and, and revisit who we are and why we got good and, and not get sloppy and, and go back to some old habits. You know, I really used uh, revenge from last year's Georgia Tech game, and it really helped. So they, it, it, when you got 120 of them, CL, that something gets all of them differently, you can't talk to that many and, and one thing tell them. So uh, they, they remember. They got to go back. But it, I, I told them this morning that uh, uh, Baylor had a, a nine-point lead on TCU this weekend with two minutes left, and they lost the game. I said, it, it happens. You got to keep playing. Um, and, and that's just that's just part of the deal. So give State credit for last year, and, and we didn't finish it. You know, it's the, the Georgia State game was playing on the TV on loop <clears throat> after the game. I mean, I wonder if it was playing during the whole week. Would that be the same situation for the State game? What we do is we take highlights from all of those games since they've been here that week, and that's what it is. We do it every week. So we, we want them to see them playing against these teams for over time. Uh, so, yeah, so that that's what we do in the – there's TVs in every hallway, so that just – I don't even see them. Uh, I see them when I walk by them, but our, our video people just take highlights from the last three years of state, and they'll put them up there. When uh, Drake won the job back in, you know, before the season, Tim Pettit is one of the key factors for why. How have you seen that play out throughout the season, that trade? Drake's been so competitive. He, he competes every day, and – uh, he'll be harder on himself than anybody. In fact, we have to be careful getting on him because he puts so much pressure on himself. I do that. And I, sometimes it's a good trait, but sometimes it, you can, uh, it hurts you because you, you set yourself back some because you're so hard on yourself. Uh, so he and I both need to learn to take it, fix it, and, and move forward. Yeah, yeah, everybody's going to support Drake and pick him up. We, we would not have won nine games without Drake playing like he did. Matt, you, um, I know you said that you guys kind of just saw the players this morning, but uh, with Josh and, and dropping the touchdown pass late, um, and you saw his reaction in on all fours. Uh, DJ Jones, I think, went over there and picked him up uh, in the moment. Like, what did you see from Josh after the game, and how do you think? Or, or how people have reacted to him and tried to pick him up. How do you think that that's going with him? He's always been so vocal with Drake, saying, you're the best, you're the greatest. You know? Yeah. How do you think people are, are trying to lift him back up? Yeah, these are great young people. And, again, we wouldn't have won nine games and won the Coastal without Josh. He's made play after play after play. And, and uh, he's made gr unbelievable catches. They're human beings. They're not video games. And, and – um, so I, when somebody makes a mistake, I make them every day, and I try to fix them, and, and that's what we do. Uh, you know, I don't – the head coach after the game's got a really strange routine. I, I go in and I see them, and I said to them about what I said to you. Um, give Georgia Tech credit. It's disappointing. We didn't play good enough. They made one more play, and we did. Uh, and we've got to figure out why and do a better job next week. So take care of yourself tonight. 
um, and I'll, I'll, I won't see you at all tomorrow, uh, but eat, sleep, and, and uh, think about NC State, and let's get better. And then I walk out and come see you all. And then I try with my, my Jeremy hands me the stats sometimes as I'm walking in, I try to look at them and, and see what I think happened and then see actually what did happen and try to give you all as honest an evaluation as I can at, at that time um, when you're just absolutely whipped. I mean, you're disappointed, you're, you're mad at yourself because you, you missed it somewhere. It's a, uh, it's the first time I've kind of felt like last year. Um, I, I didn't connect, I didn't do a good job as a head coach and, and it's, it's a shame when you uh, lost to a team that, that basically you felt like you should have beaten and that's, that's a bad thing in coaching and, and I feel bad about that. But everybody will pick Josh up and Josh is a competitor like Drake and they're two of the toughest, smartest, most competitive kids on our team and, and they'll come back and fight. What do you do after the game, um, win or loss, I mean, just in general, do you go out to dinner? Going back no. home, friends over, what's the, what's yeah, I, I have to get by myself. So I, I, I get Sally uh, right after. I, I actually talk to the team. I talk to Jones on the radio network. I come talk to you all. I go to my office. I get in the car. I drive straight home. And I have to put the game on. I, I just I can't. I, I can't emotionally um, slow down until I see what happened. And usually I'm, I'm, I'm mad if we didn't play great or I'm mad if we, we get beat. And usually they play much better than I thought and they play harder than I thought because you, you get so, you're, you're just so into it and, and it's so important to you and to them. Um, and then what I, I do, Ross, is I watch it about three times because you see something different every time. And you have to be really, really careful when you're watching it and you're mad or you're emotional because you, you may make it worse than it is just by because, oh, God, look at that. Why did he do that? And, and then two times later you say, he does that every week. That's not that bad. Uh, so I have to be careful, but I just, I can't sleep. And I, I, so I stay up till about four o'clock in the morning um, and, and then try to start over the next day. Uh, but it's, uh, it, it's just, I guess the way you're wired and I just can't do it. I can't, I can't not watch the video. If we're on an away game, I, I get it on my iPad and I watch it on the way home on the plane and, or on the bus. Um, so it's just it, I, I need to know why we didn't do well or what we did well and what needs to get better. And I actually sit and write notes, um, a couple of pages of notes for the coaches of what I see. And then on Sunday we, we meet uh, at 1230 and we go over everything. And, and those are usually hard meetings, even if you win, because I'm, I'm saying what you're all saying. Why, why, does, why did this happen? I mean, come on, guys. Help me with this. this we're, we're better than this. So come on. Uh, we got to get this fixed. This is unacceptable. So you watch it three times, even for like 8 o'clock? Uh, yeah, I, that's why you get up, you stay up till about 4. And then is it all 22? Is it a cut from your staff? Is it TV real? I always watch two of the regular copies, the videos, and then I watch the TV copy because I always want to know what the other team said. And usually they've talked to the video, to the TV people and they'll say, here's what they thought they could do against them. And that helps me too to, to see why I see what they did during the game. So you do listen to the broadcast? Just once. Do you ever kind of shake your head at the last stuff they say? I don't. I do it totally for information. And I guess since I call some of those games, I, I probably every now and then say, mm, I don't know about that, brother. Uh, <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, let's take three players, CL. Uh, Kamen, everybody thought was too short. His measurables weren't good. I guess he's six foot a half inch or something. I don't even know exactly how tall he is. Um, but he, he's National Honor Society student. Um, whipped everybody in our camp. I didn't know who he was. And, and I went to get um, some people and said, who is that? Uh, and they said, well, he's a little short. I said, I don't care. He's killed everybody in the offensive line. He's cost them all scholarships. 
And, and then you take Power Eccles. A lot of people thought he was too short. And he's one of our best players. And then when we offered said Gray, he wasn't offered a, a, a Power 5 scholarship. But those guys just love to play. And, and what you see now is what I saw in high school. And, and there's a lot more of those. But those three, uh, Josh, some people thought Josh was too short. Um, so you, you look at passion. Um, you look at love for the game. And you look at production. And, and the, I think the same thing happens in, in talking to Coach Moody about the NFL with scouts. Uh, Jeff Saturday was too little. He played 16 years or something. Um, so you've got to be really, really careful. The, the most important measurable is love of the game, passion, playing with heart, and toughness. And if they can do that, and if they've got good character, uh, you better not turn them down because it will come back to bite you. That was because I was. <laughs> you're in that big jacket, you know, like, how, how did you try to move past that, or did you not want to move past that? Did you want that to piss you off, for lack of a better word? Like, I mean, how did you process it? No, can you say that? I don't know. Senator Gray says it all the time. Well, he can. I just didn't know if, if Adam can. But, you can say whatever you want to in this building, obviously. Yeah. Uh, I retracted it. If we don't no. Um, I, I mean, it is what it is. They finished and we didn't. And, and what I hate again is it's on me. Why did we let them get behind us? Uh, why did we not get the onside kick when we practice it every day? Get the onside kick, we're not talking about that game. We're 3-0 and against them. It's not an issue. Um, so that, that's uh, you just go back and try to do the best you can do. Same thing at, at – Texas Tech when we were number one in the country and the ball was thrown in the corner and we got him double covered and one of the players says he heard a whistle blow in the in the student section so he pulled off. Same thing with Virginia when I was over trying to keep our players from getting in a fight with the students when they were uh, throwing stuff at them and, and we throw an interception that runs it back for a touchdown with a safety from Raleigh I turned down that was a true freshman. Those things don't go away. You, you keep that the rest of your life. Do you think that, yeah, I mean, frustration is such a, I don't know if that's the right word, it's not, almost not enough, but the stuff from like that and Pitt and all that last year, you talked about the locker room after the bowl loss to South Carolina. It was just a buildup of all that, wasn't it? Just an accumulation of all that mess. It really was. The, the, um, I, I think the, the, you know, we had a close loss at Notre Dame where we had a chance in the fourth quarter and we lose, and then we come back and we lose to Pitt. And they win the league. And that's how talented we were, which is disappointing for, for me um, because we, we had a great chance to win that game and just absolutely blew it. I mean, the clapping hurt us. That got us offset. But, again, that's an official's call that was wrong. Uh, but you can't let it ruin you. And then they shift and move and say something, and we have motion and go back. And uh, you got to be stronger and all that. And And – the, the thing that, uh, that you get from my standpoint, Adam, and it sounds a, a little bit like coach speak, but my job is to take these young people and help them how to handle tougher things in their life. And you got to handle tough moments like that in the Pittsburgh game. You got to handle tough moments the other night. Why didn't we stop them on third and nine? Um, we got to. Somebody got to make a play. So what, what I, I'm sitting there talking to the, the team about this morning is, you have to make a play to, to win a game. And that's, that's in life. you got to step up and do something special. So who's going to make the play? Who's going to make the play? And you're a 10-win team. There haven't been many 10-win teams here. And you don't get this back now. You'll never get that Saturday night back. You've, you've lost it for the rest of your life. And you'll have to think about it for the rest of your life. That's just it. It, it doesn't go away. But you got to use it to learn from it, and I think that would be the same with, with State last year or Pitt last year. Um, and the bowl game, I, I just I, I didn't think it. Uh, I just didn't think enough people um, fought hard enough for, for that to even be a game. Y'all just wonder if we got a moment. 
Yeah. No, it, it, we weren't. We, we had checked out. And, and I hate that, too. I, I, it's, uh, I put all of those things on me because I'm in charge of everything that happens in this building. And if a team doesn't show up, uh, I didn't get them ready. And that's, I take that very personal. Yeah, everybody beats them down this week, so I got to pick them up. And it starts with me. I got to pick me up. That that 24-hour rule's never been more important than right now. Um, be be proud of your nine wins. Be proud you won the coastal, and and uh, you got a short week to get ready for a very important game with a, a rival. So that, that's just that, that's a great lesson for life. We, nobody feels sorry for you. Nobody gonna sit around and say, "Boy, I hate that for them." They'll they'll be okay. No, you gotta do it yourself. You gotta pick yourself up and go. And they all look at me. So if if uh, and I don't lose well. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm that's been a problem for mine for years, uh, and I know it. I mean, I'm, uh, I admit it. But you cannot let one loss beat you twice, and that's really really an important an important lesson for life. So was Tech. True, obviously. But, but like, do you Virginia Tech had, I mean, Virginia had receivers I'd never heard of. Doesn't matter. Everybody got scholarship players that are good. If they weren't really good, they wouldn't have given them a scholarship. Does it make for extra study? When it makes it, it that's, that's, that's a good point. It really makes it tougher for us because we don't have any idea who's going to play. We didn't know if 17 or 15 were going to play the other night. And then on third down and nine, you don't know if they're going to throw it and take a chance because they got nothing to lose with 15 in there. If 17's in there, they're going to run it. But, but it, it, it gave them two options. They did a smart thing putting the, the quarterback that could run it or throw it in there um, on, on the third and nine. So, uh, no, we have absolutely no idea who's going to play on Thursday. Uh, it could be any of the three. And, and we've just we got, – it's been that way all year. You know, it's funny that uh, even when um, a Florida A&M came in and pulled out a quarterback that we'd never heard, it was a transfer from Vanderbilt that had played four plays, I think. Um, and I looked up last night, those guys are nine and two. They lost to us, they lost to Jackson State, and they've won nine straight. And they're a good team going to the playoffs. So, um, and, and that one totally fooled us because they'd kind of been an option team and, and they came in with a pro style offense. And then Appalachian had a new offensive coordinator. And so it's just, it's been a year where the, the defense, as much as we struggled early, has had to um, just make adjustments as the, as the game's going on. And that's why we, we had played so well in second halves, I think, as we got settled in at halftime. We found out what they were doing and we played better the second half. And, and um, we just can't get a slow start on, on Friday. Yeah. Yeah, Ross. What we did is, is you know, we had uh, Taman Fox stayed for two senior days, and so it's a little crazy now. Um, and I, I think maybe even British went to senior day last year, uh, and he's back for two more years. Uh, so what we've done with the guys, if there's some chance that you might leave, go through senior day, so you'll have one, and then if you want to come back, we got it. Same thing with the, um, they take a picture of the victory bell when we beat Duke. So seniors get in, and it doesn't matter if you're in there twice. Um, and, and then we'll all have to look at it and sit down and talk to each one of them um, after the Clemson game and, and, and try to figure out what's best. Uh, I saw another coach yesterday that said uh, uh, his quote was, we've got to wait till the season's over and all this COVID stuff and extra years, it's hard to figure out how many years people have. We actually sit in the staff room now and say, how many does he have left? When does he graduate? He, he could have a sixth year. Um, and even, uh, it hurt us so much when we lost uh, 
Uh, we lo- it hurt us when we lost Des Evans because he was playing so much better, but it hurt us when we lost Noah. Um, and we tried to appeal to see if Noah could get an extra year. And, and I don't think that's going to happen. So you just, it, it's just crazy with the, the COVID year because you have to remember when they were here in the COVID year because the ones that came in after them are back on the regular schedule. And, and I'm not even sure what COVID was in 20 and 20. So we're really two years past it. So that's going to linger for another three years, probably, with some guys. So it's just absolutely crazy. And where it does help them, if they can't play at the current place, it gives them an extra year when they transfer. And I think that's where it helps the most. Now, it's going to be crazy here, and I haven't thought about it, but the transfer portal opens up um, December 5th, I think. So who knows? And, And... Unlike most people, I, and I, I wouldn't have done this probably two years ago, uh, but I have told our guys, if, if you want to transfer and you want to get in the transfer portal and you want to stay here and play in the bowl game with us, I'm, I'm good with that. If you're transferring because you're not getting enough playing time here, but you're going to fight your guts out and help us win in the bowl game, I'm fine with that. I mean, we're being honest with each other and we're being fair, so... He, this, this person, whoever it would be, has fought and helped us uh, get to the bowl game, helped us win the Coastal. So why would we not want him around? I, I think it's just the fair and the right thing to do. And we haven't had problems with our guys that have transferred. We've helped them. We've followed up with them. And, and uh, I talked to Temple the other day, and uh, they love Zach Gill. He's starting for them at tackle, and that's been – Yeah, but they, they love him and, and Zulu. I mean, those guys transferred, and they're both playing. And, and um, so, so it, it's, it's important that you, if, if you're about young people, you're about young people, and, and you need to do what's best for them. And, and if they can't stay here, because the ones that are here now aren't mad, so why, what's going to change in the next three to five weeks? I, I just don't see it. So that's just a decision I made this year that I wouldn't have made two years ago. I have one more to allow. Yes. Okay. Well, do, do, you, do you see parallels to uh, what NC State has gone through this year to what you guys went through last year in the effect of coming in last year with Sam, hyped for the Heisman, you are rated in the top ten, but you had lost Daz and Diami, you had lost Javante and Michael. Wolfpack lost those two running backs. They lost a Messi and Wideout. They lost the offensive linemen to the Panthers. And then you had Devin Leary coming back underneath sort of the same preseason expectation. I don't know, we've talked about it a little bit. It seems like it kind of came into this year the way you guys came into the last year and then everybody was like, oh, what's going on here? You know, the only right. one East Carolina and all that. I don't know if you've seen any parallels there. What I have learned that I will not talk about our opponent. So I have learned that. And if I do, it will be very positive. And that not, might not be taken in a positive light because we struggled last year. But uh, I do think in, in our program, and it's, it's, it's part of this week with Georgia Tech, we're still learning how to handle praise. We've, we've still had trouble responding to uh, very positive things, and, and we've got to build on that. And we've got to get stronger with that and, instead of uh, happening what happened last week. I mean, that, that's... You, you got to embrace it, but build on it, and instead of uh, be complacent um, with praise, because when everybody bragging on you, uh, if you think about it, very few people repeat for championships because they don't do the little things they have to do the next year to that got them to the championship, and it's just it's been that way for a hundred years, and it makes no sense. You can be the same team, but but don't have the same attention to detail. And, and that's what we've got to start doing when we, when we get some praise. Okay? For real, Thank you.